Hello everyone, welcome to this TJ Economics video. Today we're going to be looking at a classic year 12 macroeconomics topic. We're going to be looking at classical versus Keynesian ADAS analysis. This is one of the topics that I find students get quite confused about, not so much the using the diagrams, but specifically the difference between the two schools of thought and why they have those different schools of thoughts. So, as we can see, we have these basic diagrams on the left. We've got our classical diagram. We've got macroeconomic equilibrium there. We've got LRAS, SRAS and AD all intersecting at that equilibrium, giving us PL1 and YFE. FE there, of course, standing for full employment. On the right-hand side, we've got our Keynesian diagram with AS and AD intersecting for PL1 and YFE. So, as you can see, both of these diagrams do have this idea of full employment, um, where all resources, all factors of production, land, labour and capital are being used, i.e. there's no labour that is unemployed, there's no buildings that aren't being used, etc, etc. However, um, the big difference is how they deal with changes in the economy and the assumptions they make. So, for example, the classical model, in the classical economist mind, they believe that the SRAS curve represents the relationship between factor costs or input costs, the costs of the factor of production and the output in the economy. The LRAS curve then represents productive potential. If at any point, as you can see here, we are producing below full employment, as you can see with the AD curve shifting inwards, we call that a negative output gap. It's a negative output gap because there are unemployed resources, there are unused resources. For example, there are workers without jobs, there are buildings that are not being used, factories that are not being used, capital, machinery, tractors, cars, vans that are not being used. We have a negative output gap because the economy is below full employment. The important thing though, you've got to imagine, we've effectively got a recession here, we've got a negative output gap. And so, the classical theory, the classical assumption is that because those workers have no jobs, because the factories aren't being used, because the tractors aren't being used, etc., etc., the owners of those resources, i.e. the workers who own the labour, the landlords who own the buildings, they will all accept lower prices for those resources. And as a result, input prices across the economy will fall. And if those input prices fall, SRES will shift back outwards and it returns to full employment. The crucial thing here, this requires no government intervention. It happens on its own. Input prices are infinitely flexible in the classical model. If we're in a negative output gap, input costs of labour, of raw materials, of land, of capital, of machinery, of anything, they're flexible. They drop in a recession and SRES will shift back outwards to get us back to full employment. So key takeaways. Classical economists believe that the economy will always return to full employment in the long run. This is because input and factor costs will always adjust to do so, i.e. costs go down when we're in a negative output gap or a recession and they go up in a positive output gap, returning us to full employment. The difference then in the Keynesian model, let's have a look. We've got our diagram here, as we looked at earlier, we've got our ADS, we're at full employment. What happens then is that the Keynesian economists tell us the AS curve also represents productive potential and it also tells us about the relationship between prices and output. However, this is where we start to differ. A Keynesian economist tells us that when AD falls, again we get a negative output gap, as you can see on the diagram, AD has fallen, output has fallen, and we get a negative output gap because we're at full, we're below full employment, aren't we? However, unlike classical economists, Keynesian economists say that factor prices do not adjust downwards in a recession. They say that input prices, and especially wages, are sticky downwards. And that sticky downwards phrase, it's a key term, it's what Keynes himself used, and so you can actually use that in your work. Therefore, if input prices are not self-adjusting, Long in the long run, we can have negative output gaps. Indeed, negative output gaps can and do persist in the long run because the owners of those factors of production do not accept lower prices. Workers will not forever accept lower wages. 
if just to get a job. Landlords will not keep accepting lower rents. Owners of cars and vehicles will not keep accepting lower prices. Keynesians say, actually, people don't. People don't accept lower prices. And because of that, because of the not self-adjusting nature of prices, we stay in a negative output gap in the long run. So some key takeaways, Keynesian then. Keynesian economists believe that the economy will not always return to full employment in the long run. They tell us that is because input and factor costs do not always adjust, i.e. costs don't go down due to negative output gaps. And that's the key issue. That's the key difference there. Keynesians don't believe that input costs go down in a recession, whereas classical economists do. But why is that actually important? Why do we care? Why is it so important that we have these two schools of thought? And indeed, if you're an A-level or an IB economist, why is it relevant to you? Well, really, it comes down to policy considerations. Think about this. Given that classicists, classical economists, believe the economy will always return to full employment in the long run, they place less value, they see less utility in using government policy, fiscal policy, to deal with that. After all, why in a recession would you use fiscal policy and spend money to inorganically boost output and boost growth when it's going to do that by itself anyway? As we saw in the diagram previously, output will increase itself anyway. So what's the point of getting involved? On the other hand, Keynesians, they say, actually, you do need to use expansionary fiscal policy to get out of recessions because the economy won't do it by itself. And so again, we can see classical economists are a bit more hands-off, let the economy sort itself out, whereas Keynesians prefer a bit more interventionist. And so because of those differing opinions, classical economists, for example, are more likely to favour supply-side policies as opposed to expansionary demand-side policy in the form of fiscal policy. And so we can use this as evaluation in our essays. If you, for example, write a chain of reasoning about expansionary fiscal policy boosting output in a recession, your evaluation of that point could be actually classical economists would disagree. Classical economists would say that expansionary fiscal policy isn't that useful. And so you can see it's a really useful and quite a top order skill to understand the difference between classicists and Keynesians. If you can make that distinction and use it properly in an essay, you're going to stand out. And so a summary. Classical economists believe that the economy will always return to full employment in the long run. This is because factor input prices will adjust depending on the output gap. However, Keynesian economists disagree. They argue that factor input prices are sticky downwards, especially wages. Therefore, the economy can't self-correct and output gaps will persist in the long run. These two differing assumptions will lead to significant disagreements in policy decisions and how we boost growth in recessions. And like I said, use this disagreement in your essays. Use that distinction, that dichotomy to really impress examiners. And we've got here a little table with five sort of variables and ideas and what the two schools say. For example, Keynesians would say that input prices don't adjust. Unemployment is normally caused by low levels of AD. Output gaps can persist. Expansionary fiscal policy should be used. And that supply side policies are mostly useful if we're at full employment. Classical economists, so, though, classical economists, though, input prices do adjust. In the long run, unemployment, actually, it's only really determined by LRAS, not AD. Output gaps don't persist, we self-adjust. And in the long run, expansionary fiscal policy only really leads to inflation. And therefore, the best way to reduce unemployment in the long run, use supply-side policy. So if you have found this video useful, please do like and subscribe. Feel free to follow my Instagram and Twitter. You can see my handles on screen now. There'll be plenty more economics on this channel coming soon. So please do come back at a later date if you've enjoyed.